I'm pleased to bring this petition to the House and I acknowledge Peter Ryan and the Don't Close Batemans Bay Emergency Department Group who are here in the chamber, having travelled up especially for this debate. And it's wonderful to have you here and achieving 18,000 signatures is a monumental achievement. And I congratulate those involved and it just shows how strongly the community feels on this issue. Uh, I acknowledge the member for Bega who's also in the chamber today. The Minns Labor Government has advised that it intends to close the Batemans Bay Hospital and the Emergency Department when the new Yurubadala Regional Hospital, uh, to be situated around five kilometres south of Maruya, becomes operational. Uh, the opposition and the Don't Close Batemans Bay Emergency Department group support the construction of the new Yurubadala Regional Hospital and welcome the improvements to local health services that it's expected to provide. But Batemans Bay will still need a local emergency department even when a new Level 4 Yurubadala Regional Hospital opens. What the Minns Labor Government fails to acknowledge or consider is that Batemans Bay already has an existing emergency care service staffed by qualified doctors, nurses and support personnel <coughs> with a level of equipment equal to that which is available in many larger hospitals. If the emergency department were to close, Batemans Bay would be the largest regional centre in New South Wales without an emergency department, and far worse when the population swells dramatically during holiday periods. The distance from Maruya is exacerbated by occasional flooding, frequent severe weekend and holiday congestion entering Maruya, and the Minns Labor Government's failure to commit to a Maruya bypass, let alone to a construction timetable. The recently opened Medicare Urgent Care Clinic and the proposed Community Health Service are welcome additions to the Batemans Bay community, but neither function nor facility will be able to treat the full range of emergency department presentations. During the peak holiday season, the population of Batemans Bay quadruples. And an urgent care clinic, while it's welcome, is no substitute for an emergency department. And during and outside of the holiday periods, the Batemans Bay area has a high concentration of aged care homes, higher than the southern parts of the Yurubadala local government area. Now, the Minns Labor Government says you can't have a level four Yurubadala hospital and retain the Batemans Bay Emergency Department at the same time. I say you can, and that's the position of the New South Wales opposition. Indeed, New South Wales already has a number of regions supporting a level two hospital with an emergency department within a similar distance to what will occur between Batemans Bay and Maruya. And here are some examples supported by New South Wales Health within 35 minutes of each other. Junee Level 2 and Wagga Wagga Level 5, 23 minutes apart. Crookwell Level 2 and Goulburn Level 4, 32 minutes apart. Harden Level 2 and Young Level 3, 25 minutes apart. Belgian Level 2 and Coffs Harbour Level 5, 29 minutes apart. Narromine Level 2 and Dubbo Level 5, 23 minutes apart. Cessnock Level 3, Maitland Level 4, 18 minutes apart. Parks Level 3, Forbes Level 3, 28 minutes apart. The reason the government's running this line is because it's lost control of the state budget. It's lost control of the ability to deliver the enabling infrastructure to make the level uh, for Yurubadala Hospital a reality. The construction and completion of a Maruya bypass underpins the opening of the Yurubadala Hospital but the bypass is currently stalled. No mention of it is made in the infrastructure budget paper this year, and the government can't tell us a start date or a completion date for the new Maria bypass and bridge. This issue is at the heart of this petition, and it's a topical issue for budget week. On Tuesday, we saw a budget handed down that contains cuts to health and transport infrastructure, despite record revenue, and today we're observing the consequences for regional communities now that the Minns Labor government has lost control of the budget. Yeah. Labor's cuts are hitting palliative care, frontline services, emergency departments, including in regional New South Wales. We've seen a hospital system under immense strain because of existing Labor cuts. People are waiting longer to be seen and their health is at risk. Uh, I commend this petition. Uh, it is important that uh, the Batemans Bay community be heard. It would otherwise be the largest regional centre in New South Wales without an emergency department. And I thank Peter Ryan and the Don't Close Batemans Bay Emergency Department Group for their advocacy. The question is the House take note of the petition. I call the member for bigger. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And Mr Speaker, I acknowledge the people from my community in the gallery today who have made the long journey. 
I also acknowledge the concerns that you have raised concerning emergency health care. And when we debate health services, we're talking about people's lives. There's no more important reason to hold a debate in this House. Lives will be saved because of a central level four critical care emergency service with definitive care. These lives will be saved by presenting to a single level four critical care service rather than being transferred from another local hospital or to Canberra. Now, the Leader of the Opposition referred to the Clinical Services Plan as ours. Here is a copy, 127 page Clinical Service Plan 2018, developed, developed under the previous government. Developed under the previous government. There we are. And then, and then, then, we, had, then we had the rest of the reference to the failures of this previous government to provide things. Now, we talk about other emergency departments. Bellingen receives five thousand presentations a year and has six resuscitations. Juni, which is 36 minutes from Wagga, has just over a thousand presentations and zero resuscitations. Parks is 120 kilometres from uh, Dubbo and one of the examples was Tomaree Community Hospital, which is an hour from either the John Hunter or Maitland. Seriously? Well, I'm mentioning it. They've mentioned it. So here we go. You're not comparing like with like. The thing is, Batemans Bay and Maria are 25 minutes separated, and there is no comparison. Those numbers are so low because they have existing level five or level six hospitals. Now, if we get on to the vulnerabilities of our community because of um, the so-called bypass, we have in 2019 the former member for Bega who committed to a planned duplication of the Maria bypass. Another thing he failed on. They're getting on with that all the way to Churos Head fairly quickly, within 10 years. Again, it will include the bypass. And in 2020, the former member for the South Coast was building the bypass. 2021, the member for Bathurst and former Minister for Regional Roads and Transport is building the Maria bypass. 2021, we're continuing our plans for the bypass in Singleton and Maria and the Honourable Sam Faraway in the other place has said, we're building the bypass, we're delivering for the South Coast, whether or not we hold the Bega electorate, we deliver for all of regional New South. Now, the problem was, there was never any money there. And it was designed by the previous, uh, previous failure, the serial failure of the local member for uh, Bega. And going back to their history, that former member committed to, in 2010, to restoring maternity services to Pambula Hospital if elected to government. Never happened. Never happened. And, and the, the, what he understands, he's quoted in 2018, that the connection that many people have to the existing 55-bed Maria Hospital and 31-bed facility at Batemans Bay suggests that any parochial arguments have evaporated. We need to learn from the mistakes of the past. We will work the community on that and set actions on every person in the Shire. And then, Minister Hazard, respected by many people, from 2021, works are expected to start in 2022. Never happened. Works expected to start within the term of the current government. Never happened. Works which were supposed to be completed by 2025 still haven't started. And you think they knew how much money it was going to cost? Started at 150 million, then it went to 120 million, then it went to 200 million, I should say, went to 260 million, and now our government has provided an extra $70 million yeah, to yeah. finish the job. Yeah, We're yeah. finishing the job to its full scale. That's a responsible government. The Maria Bypass was never going to be built because you didn't provide, by you was never going to be built because you never had the money. You never had the money. And as far as flooding in Maria is concerned, well, I've been there for 23 years. Friendly. You've been south of Ulladulla once, and it's never flooded in the 23 years. So there is really. So it's never happened in my, my experience. I commit. No, we're committing to building a single level four Urubadala hospital, which will not occur if you try to maintain, if you try to maintain two emergency hospitals 30 kilometres apart with people just doing it because they're trying to get their best mate into federal politics. A man who's revised history, Mr. Mr. Speaker, our government will deliver on a level four Urubadala Regional Hospital. They will... The 
Question is the House uh, take note of the petition. I call the member for four clues. This is your electorate with a petition against you. I'd be more worried if I were you. <laughs> what a uh, member for member for North Shore will be able to contribute to the debate if she seeks the call, not otherwise. It's a statement of fact, guys. The health minister, the health minister, will also come to order. Speaker, I'm, I'm afraid the audience is seeing the level of disrespect from those on this side of the house who have listed all the communities that come ahead of your community. Your local member pointing out that you don't deserve the same level of care as the others do. Now, this week, Speaker, Peter Ryan wrote to me. I'm the member for Vaucluse, but you wrote, you wrote to me, Peter, and I'm, I'm glad to see you here today. I'm, I'm glad that you've made the journey to this chamber to ensure that your voice, your voices, your community's story is heard, not just by those of us here, but by the whole chamber. And it's, it's incredibly important. My community has access on, on the doorstep, really, to at least three emergency departments. So um, why do I care? Because the principle is absolutely critical. It's critical to good government. Um, and when you have a failing health system, when you have priorities misplaced when it comes to something that is central to every taxpayer's wish, and that is good quality health care, and that includes an emergency department, when you <coughs> fail on that front, it's emblematic of the success or the failure of the government. In this case, a failure by a government that is making other choices. So I am here today to support your cause, even though I come from a community that perhaps doesn't need to care, doesn't need to stick its head up, but we should because of the importance of this principle, the fundamental principle of access to an emergency department and good quality health care. And Peter, I listened to your story. I, I took note when you said you were taken to the emergency department and they provided you with the care that you would expect. And you know, that really resonated to me as a mum who has spent many hours in the, the emergency department over the years with my children. I, I know what it's like to feel scared as a mum. You know, I remember watching my, my young boy get wheeled into an MRI and thankfully coming out okay. And I remember thinking, thank, and I, am I allowed to say thank God in here? Thank God for, for, for our healthcare system in this state. How lucky are we? But why should I be lucky and you're not? Why should you have an emergency department taken from you? Um, it's not fair and it's worth standing up for. So I'm glad you're standing up for it. So I congratulate all of you and I congratulate the other 18,000 people who also care. As the Leader of the Opposition said today, this week the government has once again handed down a budget that fails when it comes to health care. Um, it's had cruel cuts to health care. Labor's cuts, they're not, just, they're not just hitting you. We're here to talk about you, but they're not just hitting you. They're hitting the cruelest of cuts, palliative care, frontline services and emergency departments, including in regional New South Wales. The most recent Bureau of Health Information data shows a hospital system under immense strain because of Labor's existing cuts. People are waiting longer to be seen if they're lucky to have an emergency department, but they're waiting longer to be seen and their health is at risk. And why is this happening? It happens because government have choices to make. And this is a government that has made choices for their union mates um, in, in lifting the wages cap, but not, not, ta not balancing that with productivity gains. They promised you, they promised me, they promised every taxpayer in this state that any wages increases to those well-deserving nurses and frontline workers would be balanced with productivity offsets. And we haven't seen that because that is another broken promise from this terrible Labor government. They are the choices that Labor is making. Remember, this is a government that is rich with increased tax revenue. We've discovered that this week. But what's happening? Where are they spending those rivers of gold, or as the opposition leader said today, the rainbow revenue? It's not going to you, and it's not going to me, because Labor is choosing their union mates over this population, and we are seeing that over and over again today. This decision, this decision to take away your emergency department has not just astounded you, it has astounded us, because 
You know, I think about the residents in your community, I think about the tourists visiting your community, I think about this sort of narrow, huge area, and it's, it's being taken away from you. It's not like it has to be built from scratch, it's being taken away from you. So today, the message should be very clear, and it should be very loud. Do not close Batemans Bay Emergency Department. Yeah. The question is, the House take note of the petition? I call the member for South Coast. When they lost their emergency department? Privatise that terrible hospital. Sure, it's different. Mr. Speaker, I wish to acknowledge the people in the gallery and their passion for health services on the south coast, and I assure you that I share your enthusiasm for shining a light on essential services for regional New South Wales. I also acknowledge those opposite and their showmanship. They never let the truth get in the way of a good scare campaign. Their commitment to rile up the community over a false claim never disappoints. It's becoming a clear pattern. I live in the southern part of my electorate and with five children, there was a time I visited Batemans Bay Hospital on a regular basis. There were numerous visits to the emergency department for stitches after suffering accidents, surfing accidents. Now, thanks to the advocacy of Fiona Phillips, federal member for Gilmore, I would be able to attend the new Medicare Urgent Care Centre in Batemans Bay, which has seen around 1,000 patients every month, all bulk billed with no cost to the patient. But then there were the more serious accidents. Unfortunately, the emergency department at Batemans Bay operates at level two, meaning complex and critical cases must be transferred to a higher level hospital. One such accident was my son's dislocated thumb playing school cricket. After riding an ambulance to Batemans Bay Hospital, doctors put Brendan's thumb back into place. Unfortunately, they could not guarantee it was back in place properly and gave us options of going to Bega or Canberra to see an orthopaedic surgeon in the public system or going to Nara to see a surgeon at Nara Private. After considering all options, it was decided that after the cost such as travel, meals and accommodation, it would be far cheaper and less disruptive to the whole family if we are paid to attend Nara Private. Then there was the tree incident. My elder son, Jared thought it was a wonderful idea to climb a tree and subsequently broke a branch and fell to the ground. Unfortunately, his elbow was broken and his bones were protruding from the skin. Batemans Bay Hospital staff were fabulous, but they could do nothing for Jared other than to keep him stabilised and have him transferred to Canberra. By the time an ambulance was free to transfer Jared, it was 4 a.m. in the morning. Again, if there was a level four hospital in Maruya, Jared would have been treated and operated on at the hospital he presented to. We would not have had the additional pressures of travel and accommodation in Canberra. Mr. Speaker, I have a news article here headlined, One Urubadala Hospital Gets a Positive Hearing from Both Sides of Politics. And it was the member for Bega at the time, no other than Andrew Constance, who said, quote, it is a vision of mine to see one big regional facility that yep. caters for yep. everybody in the Shire and gives our health staff the best workplace. We want to stop people having to travel hundreds of kilometres for health service. They should be able to get locally. We can stop sending people in ambulances over the hill to Canberra and costing us an arm and a leg and stop putting so much pressure on families. I've, I'm hoping that any parochial arguments have evaporated. How disingenuous of these opposite to say one thing while in government and the absolute opposite now that they're in opposition. We're still order. It is driven order. by seat shopping will come to order. with local political ambitions to suit his own agenda. Community has nothing to do with this and the wider South Coast community can see straight through this appalling behaviour. The new Yorubadala Regional Hospital will have a level four emergency department complete with a purpose-built resuscitation area for trauma and other life-threatening presentations. We know that by combining the resources of the existing Maruya and Batemans Bay hospitals into a larger purpose-built health facility at Maruya, the outcome will be a new emergency department capable of providing more complex care and equipped with doctors, nurses and technology that is far above either of the existing emergency departments. Mr Speaker, Batemans Bay Hospital is old and it's well past its use by date. My sister-in-law recently retired after 12 years of nursing there and Anita told me that in her 12 years, every time it rained, the hospital leaked. Rain comes in through the windows. 
It comes through the ceiling and light fixings and even under the floor. You were there for 12 years. It's been doing it for 12 years. We're going to build a new one. The men's government is investment in a level four hospital at Maruya means the biggest ED for the entire Yorubadala Shire, with a larger capacity than the current combined emergency services and Maruya and Batemans Bay hospitals. Mr Speaker, the Minsk government is investing in regional communities and will continue to invest in health services on the south coast. This community knows what the community wanted and we will deliver it. The question is the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Ryde. Oh, thank you very much, Speaker. I came down here for a civilised debate. I wanted to enjoy this because there's 18,000 people in the community who have put their name to paper. It's an extraordinary achievement. And yet here we have uh, one of the most egregious displays of passing the buck that I've ever seen. I mean, the simple reality is that all of you are now in government. And, and, and the member for South Coast has just given you a first class example of why an emergency department is so valuable, because she's got a good story to tell and I'm happy to hear it. it's fantastic we all want to have a good story to tell and yet what you, we'll, we'll, we'll get to you member for Wollongong because you know we need to make sure that all families all members of the community get the same experience as the member for South Coast in that local hospital and that's what I want in ride that's what the member the leader of the opposition wants that's what we on this side want it seems to not be what those on that side want and I don't understand that but I am particularly uh, outraged that the member for Bega, this is your local patch, you are in fact yourself a doctor, and you've come down here and in effect, and in effect tried to defend less health services in what this community knows, what this community knows is a fast growing community. And this is why I want to speak on this motion. I want to speak on this motion because I represent a fast growing community. And I also know, I also know that that communities, that, that, that governments can change their mind. Because before this election, in fact we go back a few elections, there was no more ferocious opponent to growth and development in my community than those opposite. Right? The Minister for Planning is here, but he was a chief opponent to growth in my community of right. Now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden they're in government and things have changed. So if you accept, if you accept a backflip on your position around growth, then you surely must accept a change of position on your position around infrastructure and planning. And what could be more important for a fast-growing community than basic health services? If people get sick, if people are injured, if people need to go to the hospital, they need a functioning emergency department. I couldn't care if there were three in the community. I think you need to be able to have access. You should not have to depend on the uh, political colours of the government of the day, and yet that is what you're getting with the politicisation of this government. I have listened to the most substantive debate, which has been one of the political matesmanship around who it is that's advocating for this in the community. You're the only ones talking about politics. Uh, Peter and the community have written in, have written in, and not once have they pointed the finger of blame. And yet, and then you come in here and you want to make this about something that happened well over 12 months ago. The simple reality is that when you are in government, you are able to make decisions. You are able to appropriate funds. If you don't like the direction that things are travelling, you can change it. That's the beauty of the position. And it is fantastic. It is fantastic that the minister is here because. I think it is important, Minister, that you listen to this community. They are experiencing a change in their community and there is an opportunity for you to make a difference. And, and the Minister alluded earlier to uh, investment in Ryan Hospital and I'm grateful for it. I think it's something I've advocated for long before I got into this place. We need to make sure that hospitals like that are kept on, on track. But why is it that my hospital can get that uh, but not the people here from Batemans Bay? Member for Vaucluse accurately pointed out that she has a great abundance of access. But why are the people of Vaucluse any more deserving than the people of Batemans Bay? I don't understand that either. You know, you are the party that likes to talk about fairness, talk about equality. Well, here's an opportunity to balance the scales. Here's an opportunity to actually make sure that the people that have taken the time to come down here 
are able to get the same access to services that I can get, member for Vaucluse can get, that many of you in your electorates can get. And I'm particularly upset at the, at the way that the local member has acquiesced responsibility. There's an opportunity to stand up, to be responsible, to talk. You're the parliamentary secretary. You have the ability to influence your minister, to appropriate the funds. You have a say over these issues and you've abandoned ship and you've left it up to the opposition to do the advocacy for this community. I don't understand. I wouldn't stand for it. I don't think the member for North Shore would stand for it. I don't think the member for Badgerys Creek would stand for it. The member for Terrigal wouldn't stand for it. The leader of the opposition certainly doesn't stand for it. So I don't. And Brad Hazard would never have allowed it. So I don't understand. I don't understand. Why I think. I think. I think the member for North Shore for the interjection. I don't understand how you can acquiesce responsibility. You're the parliamentary secretary. You're the local member. You've got the ear of the minister. You're in government. All the conditions are set to make a change. All the conditions are there to deliver for these people. They've taken the trip, and you are abandoning it. And it's a shame, and it's a disgrace. And the minister, I call you. To, to allocate the funding, make it happen. The member for Kiama seeks leave to make a contribution. Is leave granted? No. No. Leave is not granted. Leave is not granted. Order. The member, member for Kiama will resume his seat. Member for Kiama will resume his seat or he will leave the chamber. I call the Minister for Health in response. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and, and to the men and women in the gallery today, I thank you very, very much. Um, people advocating for health services in their community is absolutely critical. Um, this is a very important issue. Um, I would argue, as the Minister for Health, uh, Mr Speaker, that this is the delivery of health services in regional, rural and remote communities is absolutely critical. Uh, there is no stronger champion for your community in this chamber than the member for Bega. Uh, he, he, he order. Been, member for North Shore will come to order. Appointed, he has been appointed the secretary for myself because of his fantastic advocacy. But let me talk. Let, let, let me say a few things to those in the gallery, just to get a few some things clarified. Uh, when I think of rural and regional and remote healthcare. I think of Vaucluse, the community of Vaucluse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They struggle. When I think of rural, regional and remote health care, I think of right. I think of right. You mean the right? North Shore. That's when I think of rural, regional and remote health care, I think of North Shore. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, let me tell you this to those in the gallery. There are plenty over there, plenty on that side from regional, rural New South Wales who could have been down here today. But you know what they do? They pick the three Sydney MPs three Sydney MPs to make out their so-called advocates. Let me tell you this, because I've looked at this issue very carefully to the gallery, very carefully. Order. Firstly, Order. Firstly, we will stop the clock. Firstly, we will stop the clock. We will firstly, stop the clock. Sorry, sorry, Minister. The House will come to order. Members who continue to interject will be removed under 249A till the conclusion of the petition debate. Um, we'll restart the clock and I call the Minister for Health. Firstly, there was one side who committed and is delivering the new one hospital. That is this side at a level four. It'll be the first hospital in the Shire that has an ICU. That's a fact. Second fact is the clinical services plan that charts the services for a community was developed, announced and delivered under that former government. Now, you can't have it both ways. You can't falsehood, send falsehood to the community and say we are going to allow another ED, the ED to remain in place at Batemans Bay as well as having this, when your own plan said that wouldn't be feasible. It wouldn't be feasible or safe because level four hospitals need two things. They need throughput from patients and they need adequate staffing. They are a considerably higher level of hospital than what is there. And I'm not going to shortchange the people of the Eurobadala Shire by dare pretending to them by dare pretending to them that you can somehow have a rundown emergency department with adequate staff at Batemans Bay, but you can also have a level four hospital 26 kilometres down the road. That is rubbish. I'm not going to stand for a community that I've got an enormous amount of interest and care for and say that's a reality. But I also won't stand here and say this. I also won't hear and stand this. I won't stand and listen to rubbish from city MPs about rural and regional health when they've got no idea. They've got no idea what it's like to live in regional communities. They've got no idea of the challenges of regional health. This side of politics will deliver Order. a level four hospital Order. because your Member, community deserves it. Minister and Member for Kerra. 
Order. The House will come to order as we hear from the member uh, for Cronulla and Leader of the Opposition in reply. I thank all members for their contribution. So, constituents of Bega, this is what you hear from your local member. Uh, the previous government promises uh, a Maruya bypass, an election happens, he rules it out. You're never going to get a Maruya bypass under this member. Then, then he tells you, then he tells you, notwithstanding there are level two hospitals uh, within uh, less than 35 minutes in places like Junee, Bellingen, Narromine and Cessnock of level four and level five hospitals, you people in Batemans Bay are not entitled to the same level of health care as those other centres. This is what your local member is telling you. This is what your local member is telling you. Even though you are the, you will be the largest regional centre in New South Wales at Madam Emergency Department, he says that's okay. He says that's okay. It's good enough for Junee, Crookwell, uh, Bellingen, Narromine, Cessnock, to have level two hospitals within half an hour of a level four or level high hospital, but it's not good enough for you. Why has this come about? It's because this government, government is spending its budget order. on its union mates. It promised, it promised that wage increases would be funded, would be funded from productivity offsets, and instead it is ripping the money off local communities like yours because it's breaching its promise. We know in 27-28. The transport infrastructure spend will be down 41 per cent. There will be no money for a marine bypass under this government. There will be no money for keeping Batemans Bay under this government because they have spent all their money on their union mates. Everything comes home to roost because of their financial mismanagement. Member for Kerr will come to order. And when the, Maria, when the, when the Eurovidal Regional Hospital opens, which we all welcome, under this government there will be fewer emergency department beds than there are now in the Eurovidal Shire. That's what you get when you have a government that can't manage the money and can't manage the finances. The question is, the House take note of the petition. All that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. Oh. Oh. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it.